All right, all right. Anita in the building. Yeah. All right. So you're you're talking to me through the phone, right? You know, you 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 talking to me through the phone. Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. That makes for a good audio. All right. Um so you reached out to me and uh you said you want to talk about your experience with uh with Variant, a subsidiary of mm -hmm. US Express. I was like, okay, okay, well what you what you got to talk about? You know, you sent me whew, a mouthful. Yeah. Man. Um, so let me start off with this. Uh go ahead and introduce yourself and uh and we'll go from there. What, like what type of instruction? I'm Anita. I've been driving since July last year. I got licensed in October officially. Um, this is technically my fourth company by choice because <laughs> these companies are not what they say they are. So I usually go to the next one, and I haven't been able to find anybody. That's you're from you're from New York. New York. What, what, part, what part of New York, New York are you City. from? Brooklyn. Oh, you from Brooklyn? Brooklyn. Okay. Yes. Well, let me <laughs> let me ask you this because I, I always I'm I'm always curious to know, uh, you know the boroughs and everything. Where do you park mm -hmm. when you go to home time? See, that's the thing. Like, I don't I don't reside in Brooklyn anymore. I relocated upstate, so. What I do now is when I come out here, I leave it at my brother's house because they have like a, a, a driveway, so it's fine. Yeah, so I don't park. I don't park in the city, no. And that's my issue with this company too. Like for my home time, I use that address, and they just again like disregard even that simple request. <laughs> I I got a buddy. I you know I got a buddy that stayed mm -hmm. down in Queens, and you know he has a. Mm -hmm. You know, he has a place where he parks uptown, too. So, so yeah, I always wonder, yeah. like, for the people that stay in the city or in the boroughs or anything like that, like, where do you guys park <laughs> your trucks for a home time? Okay, okay. Well. Man, they've been getting crazy out there, so it's definitely got to have a, resi a residence with, like, a driveway, and it has to be, like, good. <laughs> Anita, um, so... What's your experience? What's 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 going on? Like, uh, like I said, um, you, you you sent me um, you know, you 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 talked to me in the yeah. in the um, you know, in the email, Please and and you were saying that yeah. you you were saying that you was you was going through a a whole host of uh issues uh with with variant yeah. right now and. <laughs> Um, yeah. talk to me. Let, let let us know what's going on. Floor is yours. Okay. Oh. Where's my leaf? Mm. So I started with Variant um, April 23rd. They flew me out to Chicago, well, to, to Marshall, Illinois. Um, I was supposed to do my orientation that Monday, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but I wasn't able to technically be assigned a truck. However, that did not happen. They have this intense, like, I guess, background check. You need to actually speak with your employer, although it's already been there by the recruiter. Before you got there, they still need to speak to them themselves. And if they cannot verify it, then they're sending you home, regardless of it already, quote unquote, being verified by your recruiter. So anyways, that Thursday, I get assigned the truck. Um, I go to do the pre-trip, you know, inspect the truck and sure everything is okay. Passenger seat is filled with mildew. Now, I didn't know it was mildew until after the fact, because I'm looking at it, I'm like, the truck stinks, like it has a smell. So I speak to um, one of the guys who was running our organization, and I informed him, you know, it has a smell. I did write it on the paperwork for my pre-trip, and he needed to go over to the shop. He's like... No, if there's an issue, you have to let them know because although you fill out that paperwork, it doesn't mean that they're going to pull your truck into the shop. So I'm like, okay, cool, no problem. I go over there, I let them know. Guy comes out from the shop, he steps into the truck, he's like, okay, I know what you're talking about. I do smell it too. Long story short, um, 
the truck never gets repaired. Uh, I'm going back and forth with them. So that took about maybe like a good week. From that Thursday that they assigned it, I didn't get into a new truck until probably that following Thursday. Um, I sent, I had to eventually send them over pictures that I had taken from that uh, first Thursday that they sent me there when they claimed that they cleaned it that Friday and then they claimed that they did another deep cleaning on Saturday. And for some reason, they said that they were going to have to have the detail and come out. The detail didn't come out until Friday, supposedly. So they were going to really detail the whole truck. I'm like, it's not the whole truck that needs to be cleaned. It's the passengers. That's the problem. Um, mind you, they had the ozone machine thing or something like that already in the shop that they used to use the clean. So I don't understand why they said I had to wait for the detail. But long story short, it wasn't done. So um, I ended up speaking to the terminal manager. They uh, ended up telling me basically like there was no odor with the truck. So when I did actually get to speaking to the um, manager's manager and the um, mentorship program organizer, they were both telling me basically you know that there was an issue where when they went out to inspect the truck that they went to the wrong truck. Now again, all these trucks have numbers right on the front of the hood. So it's beyond me how they went to the wrong truck, which they assigned me. So from there, I just felt like everything was just going wrong. Now, initially, they did not want to pay me for this time that I was sitting all of them Um, One of the fleet managers that I did have, she did initially, like, take a, a step in, and she tried to get it rectified, and she's the one to actually push for me to get paid for the suit that was the way that I had. So they ended up getting shut eventually got to get into that truck. Um, they assigned me a load. That load, however, didn't have the paperwork. So I told them that I couldn't run the load because it did not have the paperwork. Um, this is when I had, well, before I even, I'm all over the place because I'm missing the part with Joe John. <laughs> yes and no. Um, at the time, I was in my RC, um, their apprenticeship program, but I did not pass my road test with them. So I did the school through them, but I failed my road test. Uh, they could not keep me signed on while I waited for my next road test, unless I took a position to work as like a dock worker or something. And I just didn't feel like it was safe. So I declined that offer. And they, they didn't want to just have me waiting to take my road test, so they just didn't want to continue. So I actually um, started working with another company, and I did my road test with them, but it wasn't like they paid for my school. I just ended up using a truck last minute because the place that I had intended to use canceled on me last minute. So they were nice enough to let me use their truck. So that's how you got your license, and you chose yes. Variant as the first company to go with? No, this is my fourth company. Fourth company. Uh, well, variant. It it seems as though you're you're having problems on pr top of problems. <laughs> well, variant. You you decided to you decided to get on with variant. How did you how did yeah. you come across variant? Like, did, did you was there somebody you um, watching? You seen the videos or? You just, you, you no, just. No, I think I ended up applying for something online, like an Indeed position. And you know how the recruiters are attached to those things. So a recruiter ended up following up with me. Basically, yeah. what you were saying is everything that the recruiter kind of told you, you know, during the recruiting process didn't come to fruition when you actually got with the company. Correct. All right. So Correct. now that you're with the company, what is all the experiences good or bad that's going on with you with the company everything has been negative bad bad everything has been bad all right break it down <laughs> who makes my coffee who makes my coffee will someone explain to me why i'm the worst day of my life my coffee tastes like shit your coffee is normally made by kato who the hell is that um again i got here uh April 23rd, they flew me out from New York to Markham, Illinois. I was supposed to start my training that Monday. By Wednesday, I would have been assigned a truck. They have this intense background training that they have to do or employer verification process. If they can't verify your employer prior employment, they send you home. 
Um, they initially, like, they signed me a truck that Thursday, eventually. Um, the truck was dirty. It had mold and mildew all in the passenger seat. Six pictures from day one, day two, and day three of when they, quote-unquote, did the cleaning. They claimed that nothing was wrong with it. I spoke to the Markham terminal manager, and, like, even that following day during that week, they were still telling me that there was nothing wrong with it to the point where I had to have my fleet manager on top of the shop manager request pictures that I had of my truck be sent to them. So when I sent them over the pictures, then they found my truck. I don't know how they were a number off from my truck when they assigned me the truck so they knew which truck it was, but whatever. So then they confirmed that there was an issue with the truck. Uh, they eventually tried like cleaning out the truck again, and it, it, it was still in the truck, so they had to try and get me a new truck. In the process of them trying to get me a new truck, they wanted to um, get me to, I think it was Indianapolis. Uh, I couldn't get the rental at Hertz, so they tried to set me up with another rental at, I believe it was Enterprise, but it wasn't at the same location. So they get me transported over there. Um, It was another issue with the driver being able to find the, the actual terminal because it was at ORD, the airport was super huge. So I ended up having to go back to the hotel for that night. When I got up the next day, they tried to get me again to go back to ORD for it, refused, told them to just put me on Greyhound. I get up, get situated for the Greyhound. I get to the first drop location, which is just a pickup point, and they were going to transport me to the actual Greyhound terminal to continue the rest of the trip second portion of the trip gets canceled. So now they have to find another way to get me there. Um, and all of this, I'm mentioning all of this because that comes back into play with the incident following Joe John, Dolphin Trucker, supposedly trying to be a good mentor and help me through the situation. When all of this happened, they ended up reassigning me another truck that was actually at the Markham Terminal. So I finally get my truck. They get me a load. The load is at that terminal. However, the load does not have the proper paperwork, so I'm telling them I can't move the truck. Um, they eventually like get something sent over, but it's not the the bill of lading. It, nothing is detailed up there, so I still tell them, you know, I can't, I can't take the truck. A couple other drivers like they, they're helping me out. They're like, you know what? Call safety, send it over to safety. Let safety know what's going on, and safety will get at them. After that, um. <laughs> There was, Joe John was trying to sign herself as, her, as a mentor for me because I signed up for the mentorship program. Long story short, I don't know what email was sent, so I sent them over an email, you know, drafting my current experience with them as far as, like, the truck and them giving me an issue getting up and running. That fleet manager responded to that email very long-winded, saying that I refused anything and I didn't, you know, make any efforts to get up and running. So I was just like, you know what, Joe John, it's too long to even reply. You can have them just let them know to call my phone directly because I was messaging them. I sent that one message, that email on her phone. I was like, it's just too long. You can have them call me. That night, I noticed that they unassigned me from my truck. Mind you, no one had spoken with me at all after that email. She didn't come back and tell me anything. Um, so the next morning, my fleet manager called me. This is the one that was actually pushing for me to get paid for like that week that they had me sitting waiting on the truck to be fixed out the shop or me to get placed into a new truck. So she's like, oh, you know, we heard that you resigned. We're working on trying to get you home. So I'm just like, who said that I resigned? She was like, oh, well, Joe John told us that you resigned. We have it in an email. I was like, but no one spoke to me directly. That's not what was said. And even if it was, why didn't someone speak to me that night? I noticed that they unassigned my truck last night. So I asked her to send me the email to, you know, basically show what Joe John said. She said she couldn't forward me the email because it was other, you know, conversations or things being said in the email. So I'm like, okay, fine. So after that, they get me over to the fleet manager and the mentor ship program organizer guy. I forgot his name. I think it's Donald or something like that. So in the midst of us talking, um, Matt finally does, you know, he does apologize for the situation and that's how I know that he claimed that they went to the wrong truck number opposed to my truck number. He said that's why they were asking for pictures of that I had of the truck. I was like, okay, fine, whatever, no problem. 
And the same girls I'm still asking, like, so what's the process of me getting assigned to a new fleet? Because I don't want to have to deal with animosity or being retaliated against just because I did not want to take this dirty truck. They're like, oh, that's not going to be a problem. Um, it's like, you don't want to give it a try, ada, ada, ada. I'm like, it's not, I don't want to give it a try. You know, I'm trying. So he's basically like, this is the, the um, mentorship program organizer, whatever it is. And he basically says, okay, so I don't think that this is going to work. I'm like, what's not going to work? I'm like, I said that I would give it a try, but you're still telling me it's not going to work. What do you want me to say? That's why I was like in the email, I was like, I, I guess I wasn't enthusiastic about him, like giving me the, the opportunity to like try for them. But anyway, if we get past that, I get my load and I go out. Now, one of the loads that I had, every every load that they've given me has just been like short runs because they've been trying to keep me on a split sleeper berth. My clock was like crazy for like my first like two, three weeks maybe. And I'm just looking at it like this is not going to work. So I eventually told them, I'm like, you know, the loads that you're sending me, the times are late. Every load that I've gotten, it was past the time for me to pick up basically. I'm like, if I'm going to arrive late, I don't want y'all to say, like, I, I got there late when you gave it to me late. So they're just like, you know, sometimes the system the system is supposed to look at these things and pre-plan everything, whatever. So I'm just like, you know what? Now I'm going to just set up my own time, and I started running on my full, like, 10 sleeper and then 10 drive or whatever the case might be so that I can, like, do the eight and try and recap since I'm OCR and just keep running instead of having to do, like, a 34 on road. I'm like, I don't want to do that for all that. You can just send me home. But it never, it never worked out that way. Uh, one of the loads that I was delivering, when I got there for the truck, I told them that there was an issue with landing gear. Um, they basically, there's too many people, like too many departments here. Every time I call someone, oh, you have to call this department, you have to call that department. So they redirect me to, to break down. I speak to break down, a guy comes out, and he starts messing with the lane again. He's like, oh, it was just stuck in the middle. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean it was just stuck in the middle? I'm like, it, this is going to be an issue going forward because when I get there, I'm going to have the same issue. It's rusted. Like, it's not going to, you know, go up and down the way that it should. So they didn't do anything. They they just let me run with the load. So I get to the ship, to the coast or whatever. Um, they saw me slide my team in the back and back into the dock. No sooner than I do that, the guy gets on with the forklift to offload the truck falls right through the trailer. Um, he was fine. He was able to get out through, the, through like, the opening of the, the trailer bottom and the side wall of it. But the complaints that I... They told me that I had to report it as an accident. So I called and reported it as an accident. They gave me an accident report number. They refused to give me a copy of the accident. So I'm just trying to make sure that nothing was on my dad record. They still have not given me anything, and this was back in, I think, mid-May. Um, they were telling me, oh, well, I was supposed to get the incident report from the shipper. Well, from the place where I was, of course, I needed to trust before I left, so that's been the issue. So after that, again, they keep having me sit, and they don't give me, like, a load right after. And if they do, it's only when they want me to do my split sleeper. Um... That what happened? It's all just been it's all just been bad experience. My first my first week out basically I I took home three hundred and fifteen dollars. Second week I probably took home about seven hundred. After that I probably took home about eleven hundred. That was gross probably, I think it was. Um then this week they just asked, I think it was like a thousand, same difference. And that was only because I was complaining. I told them, you know, send me the numbers to HR. Every time I say I'm going to go to HR, like, then you'll notice a change. But it's just like, why do I have to keep going through that in order to get a response from y'all? That should be ongoing. Like, it should be a continuous flow. Um, when I did my home time, I went home last month. I did, I went home for Memorial Day. I took, I was out that whole month, basically, because I never went home from the 23rd when they flew me out. So they only gave me, like, some two days off, which did not make sense or whatever the case might have been. But still, whatever, I took my home time. They did not get me home on time, but still expecting me to come back out on time. So I kinda, when I get that job to come back out that night, that morning, because I had it for 1 a.m., 
um, I was supposed to be doing a pickup in a part of PA, which was probably going to be a, like a four hour drive for me. So I'm like, cool, whatever, fine, I can do that. But they sent that at like 5 p.m. By like 10 p.m. that evening, they were sending a new update telling me I had to go make a stop in Connecticut to pick up my trailer and then go to PA. So now I'm like trying to do the math on how am I going to get up on time to, to now make that stop and so make my pickup on time. So I let them know, like, hey, you know, it, it's probably going to be late. They don't say anything. They're just like, you know, go get the trailer. On my way trying to go get the trailer, like, I'm I'm tired. So I tell them, you know, I'm tired. I have to stop. Boom. So I stop on the side of the road. I, I take a nap real quick, like an hour nap. I get back up. There's no messages about this load being canceled, taken away from me. No, nothing. I I drive, I think it was about maybe another hour and a half left, maybe two. Um, so I drive the, the rest of the way to go pick up the trailer in Connecticut. The trailer does not have an inspection. Um, the wheels are so rusted. I'm just like, yo, I can't move this trailer. They're like, when I speak to the guys inside the shop, they're like, no, we can't do a DOT inspection for you. So I'm speaking to this fashion line. I know the situation. And they're just like, basically, like, the job is no longer available. I'm just like, so why did I come out this way for this trailer? They're like, oh, we're going to just get you a new place to pick up a, tra- a trailer. Again, why did I come out to this location? So I'm sitting there waiting on them to get back to me. And they're never like one, two, three. It's always like maybe an hour, maybe a two wait. I'm like, okay. So they finally get me something else set up. It's, it's, it's just all been bad. It's just all been bad. Like this this most recent incident that I had with um this load that I'm on too. Um, I get to this shipper. They assign me this job. I was supposed to pick up this load on the 14th. However, it happened, they did not have a trailer available for me. So they sent me to four different locations to check for empty trailers. First location, trailer wasn't even there. This lady, they... I don't know if it was a lady or not because they just be this, they be messaging. But whoever this person was in this guy told me, well, we tried the trailer. It's there. The trailer was not there. I sent me to the other location. I think that one, the trailer was actually loaded. So I'm like, I'm, I'm, am I picking up a loaded trailer or an empty? I'm a little second to get back to me. She's like, no, it's supposed to be empty. So instead of me like pulling out, I had to go back and put that trailer back and park it up. Um, the next location they sent me to, the trailer was already signed so on the operator. I go into the Walmart lot that they have it in, which is weird to me because I'm like, this is Walmart Plaza. Like, why would there be a US Express trailer here? So I see the driver and he's connected to the trailer that they assigned me. So I messaged them like, hey. There's a driver already assigned to the trailer. He's literally attached to it in his sleeper berth right now. So they sent me another address to go to. So I finally get there, pick up that trailer. Um, that one was fine. It was actually a, a, a. So I come over to the shipper to to do the pickup. Mind you, it's already a day late. So I drop off that trailer. They said I could not do the pickup without leaving an empty trailer. So. I leave my empty trailer in the midst of me like backing and trying to drop that trailer off. The the parking there was horrible. There's no, there is literally just space for the trailers. There's not even like walking space in between the trailers in a sense. So I'm backing in that trailer. They said that I hit the trailer on my driver's side. I'm like, I never hit the trailer on my driver's side. I was very close. Yeah. But on my blind side, I might've been closer on that side and I didn't see. So that's why they saw me kept pulling up and getting out and looking. They were like, no, the security guard was like, no, we got a report that you hit it on the driver's side. He didn't mention anything about an incident report being done. He's just like, okay, but for future reference, if you do ever come back to this um, location, if you, you find it difficult to park the trailers, we know it's very tight. If you find it difficult, you can just drop the trailer in the um, vicinity and then we'll have one of our yard jobs he's putting in. I was like, okay, that's good to know. No problem. I'll know that going forward. So as I'm leaving the location, they um they asked for the bill of lading that they had gave me back. But in the meantime, before they gave the back, he was like, Oh, you know, can I get your license? So I'm just like, Okay. I was like, Is it, you know, standard? 
after he gives it back to me, he's like, no, they just told me to grab it. I'm like, okay, so what did they tell you to grab it for? He says, um, because they have to do a report. I'm like, a report for what? They said they're doing an incident report for the trailer that I hit. So I get my license back from them, and I go back onto their property just so that I could go take pictures of the trailer just to have my own records. Now, they never provided me with the incident report that day. They never took pictures with um, from the time that that incident happened, but claimed that they had pictures when the DOT officer arrived. All the pictures that they have from my trailer, <laughs> the pictures that they took are from the passenger side basically the blind side end of the, tra- of the trailer i'm like if i hit it on my driver's side why do you not have any pictures of my driver's side and the DOT officer didn't give me a ticket so he said it's not a um a reportable accident ada, ada, ada. but again this is another report that u.s express is refusing to give me a copy of when i spoke to the guy to report it he um he was asking me to send him pictures but since they didn't um give me the report from last time, I told them, you know, once the insurance people reach out to y'all, then you can have them contact me and I'll send them what I have. He's like, okay, so you're refusing to send us pictures. I'm like, when did I say I refuse to send you pictures? So now I'm done with this though. When I got here, I got out here. I was supposed to drop this on the 15th, I think at 11. It wasn't gonna happen because of that incident and me already picking up a little late. So I get out here and then they said that they didn't even tell me that they changed the time. I looked at it because they have this in the app where you can set your projected your projected time of availability. So I saw that they updated it to Monday at like um, 8 a.m. And I'm just like, you know, my PTA is for today at about, you know, 8 p.m. So I don't know who changed it or why it was changed, but I'm not sitting on this order till Monday. She, the person responds like, you know, that may be that may be the case, but your appointment is not set until Monday the 19th. So initially, I did ask them to repower the load, and you know, we have this option where we can have like an emergency stop home put in. So I asked them to repower the load and get me home. But then I'm like, if I repower the load, they're gonna have somebody come out here and drive it 10 minutes away, and then I have to split that pay with them for 10 minutes with everything that I went through behind this load. I'm not splitting my pay with that. So I actually sat on the load, but the next job that they even tried to assign me was going basically to upstate New York, where I reside. And I'm just like, that's not where I park my truck at. So that's I was just like, you know what? I got to continue my split sleeper birth and do that reset anyway. So I just did my split, my um split um sleeper birth. I don't I don't intend to to stay here with them because nothing is changing, and it just keeps getting worse. Like literally with this last week that just with this week that just passed, I probably ran two loads. So that means when I do my math, like they have like this per diem thing where you get like twelve cents on tax or something like that, whatever it is. So I removed that per diem so I could get my full fifty six cents. I'm like, after I do my math, it's like four twenty something I'm taking home. I'm like, not for OTR. And the fact that I'm staying out a month at a time, that it makes no sense. I've spoken to several different dudes at this company. I've literally seen their settlement sheets, sixteen hundred gross and better. Mm. I'm like, I don't understand why I'm struggling to get miles, and that's what I'm asking for. Mm. Lots going on there. Um... And I have pictures, I have videos, I have recordings, so they can say what they want. I have it all. <laughs> wow. Um, so Anita, let's start with the truck. Um, so, so the first, the first truck that you get was all torn up. It was mildewy. I said all in the seat and you can see it. It looked like, cause I thought maybe the person had a pet and the pet used the bathroom on it. And the other truckers came over and they were looking at it. The lady's like, "Uh uh-uh, that's mildew. I'm like, that's even worse. So I'm just like, No. You tell them about it, and they mm-hmm. they they cleaned it first instead of just giving you no. a whole new truck. First off, this they came back to me on three separate occasions saying that they cleaned that truck. They never cleaned that truck. From that Thursday when they gave it to me, and I told them about the issue, they said the detailer was coming in Friday. That Friday, ain't nobody touched that truck. They probably drove it through the shop and put it right back in another parking spot. 
Nothing was different about that truck. So how long how long did you have to how long was that ordeal before they actually gave you another truck? Literally a week. Literally a week. So from Thursday to Thursday. So during that whole process <laughs> of waiting for a truck, that's you can attest that to breakdown pay. So during that whole week, yeah. you, you didn't get paid while you was waiting for another they truck? Initially, no, they initially did not put in anything for my breakdown pay because they said that there was nothing wrong with the truck. You get me? So had I not had those pictures, they would have not paid me. So it took for another fleet manager who was like, she was the only one trying to get everything set up as far as getting me to the rental location, getting me to the Greyhound location. She was the only one sitting there trying to, and she's like, no, I'm going to see what I can do to get you paid for this time that she's been sitting there. Because they were just like straight up and down telling me no. Why are <laughs> they, why, why are they trying to put you on a Greyhound instead of just putting you in, in a rental like they started to? Hertz couldn't rent to me. Um, why? They, like I said, when they sent me to ORD, the guy, because I had, my car got totaled out in 2016, I think it was. I had full coverage. New York City had full coverage. It was the, um, what you call that? It was finance. But I don't know. I guess Geico didn't cover the whole thing. So they said that there was a balance of like $200. I'm like, I have full coverage insurance that was supposed to be covered. So they have me on a do not run list, which I did not know. Because I wouldn't have even told them to look at there. What about Enterprise? Enterprise, the, the the driver could not find it. It was late. He was, like, literally trying to kick me out of his car because he was, I guess he had another job to pick up. And I'm just like, They're just, you're not going to leave me on the side of the road. You can take me back to Terminal 2 where I originally got picked up last time. That's where they do, like, the, the taxi pickups in o ORD. So I was like, you can just drop me at Terminal 2 for all of that because... I'm not walking around the airport asking some random people for directions. I'm like, no, this like I'm not even from out here. <laughs> They're like, oh well, you can just ask someone. I'm like, what? Okay, wait, wait. D was it was it their driver or Uber driver or? No, or this was this was a, a, a Lyft driver. Yeah, a Uber driver or a Lyft driver. Okay, so a yeah. Lyft a Lyft driver took you over to O'Hara Airport because this this is in Markham, Illinois, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, and he could not find a rented place. Um, I'm going to play devil's advocate. Uh, did you mm -hmm. did you by chance get out of the car to go inside and ask somebody where's the Enterprise because it's right there on the oh, corner. No. It's it's right there on the no. corner when you when you walk through the main terminal and make a right. It's right down the hallway on the left hand side. No. He entered I think he entered at like terminal five and just kept driving down that chute and he wanted to drop me off there. And I'm just like, No, mind you, I have all my bags. So I'm just like, I'm not walking through this airport. When I got to the other one, it was plain as day. Like I was able to find it. They sent me to it the other airport that they had sent me to. I forgot which one that was. But you know, it had the signage. I was able to find it, no problem. This one, it was I couldn't see anything up there. Now you're back at the terminal. You tell them about the ordeal with the with the rental car situation. And now they want to put you on a Greyhound mm -hmm. to go to Indy Indiana. I opted for the Greyhound. So yes, what? I opted for the Greyhound. Okay, so they, I opted for the Greyhound. So you wanted yeah. the Greyhound to go to Indiana to pick up your new yes. truck? Yes. So so you finally get your you you finally get your new truck and now you're starting to do your runs but the miles is just not mouthing no. right now. I never got to Indiana. <laughs> oh, you never got to Indiana. Well, where, where you well, get your new truck from? No, I told you they they mark them. They they ended up canceling my second portion because it was a two-part trip of the Greyhound. So they canceled the second portion. So all, all that time wasted. Just and they to had get another it. truck at that location. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so now you. Yeah. So now you. Now you're in the new truck, but as you said yes. before, the miles is just ain't mouling right now. Not at all. 
Okay. So, but did you Not end up? at all. But did you end up getting paid for the time that you sat all the way up until you got the new yes. truck? Okay. Okay. So that's yeah. a, not so, not all of the time, but I got paid for seven of those days, at least seven. Okay, good. The other two days when they, they assigned me the load, they didn't pay me for. I'd like a large coffee. Okay, so hot coffee. Hot coffee. Okay, room for cream. Totally leave room for cream. Okay, great. All right, so you're so you're in the new truck. You're like I said before, the miles is just ain't miling right now. Where did the not at all. What's what's with the what's with the dial face situation? Like I I I heard you mention um, that that dial face came into into play. Where where did she come into play at? And and you already said the outcome wasn't all that hot, but where did she come into play at? She legit got me fired. <laughs> Um, it came into play when they were still working on, I guess, getting me the new truck assigned. So, okay, so when I was got that, that truck assigned. So was that you that reached out to her or they reached out to her? Oh, no, she just, no, I didn't, I didn't even know who she was. Like, we were all just, like, sitting outside. You know, I've been there for, like, going on two weeks, basically, whatever it is. So, I didn't even know everybody that's there right now. So, we're just sitting outside, and we're all talking about everything. Um, I explained the situation. She overhears me, like, you know, explaining what's going on. So, I explained the situation to her. So, she volunteers. She's like, you know, yeah. Oh, y'all met face-to-face. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this is at <laughs> so this is at Markham. Yeah, correct. <laughs> okay, okay. So y'all met face to face. You explained to her what was your correct. issue was, and she offered yes. she offered to help. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. She's like, give me your information, and I'll let them know that I'm a mentor. You know, and I'll be your mentor, so you can reach out to me if you have any questions. Out of out of, you know, because I guess she was having something done to her truck, also some repairs or whatever. But I don't know the ne- when I got the ch- yeah when I got the truck assigned, and then I don't I don't I don't remember if it was like assigned at that time or if it wasn't yet assigned. I think it was assigned, but they still had to check it out in the shop, whatever it was. But when they assigned me that first load, like I said, it didn't have the like the the um the bill of lading information. They said that it would probably be at the guard shack, wasn't at the guard shack. Um. So then they eventually like email me something later in the day, and I'm just like, but it has no information, like legit nothing on that paper. So I'm just like, I can't move this. Like I'm gonna get stopped. Like if I get stopped by DOT, that's on me. That's not on you guys. So I thought I didn't want to open it because it came in spam. So I forwarded it to her. She was like, she opened it. So she um actually sent it back to me. And I guess she she claimed she didn't notice that it didn't have, you know, didn't. She did not notice that it did not have the information needed in order to transport the load. She's like, "Oh, but if it was me, I still would have took it." I'm like, "That's good. That's you. <laughs> you had you you didn't have paper. You you got to sign the load, but you didn't have the paperwork for the load. You yes. so I mean, if you didn't have the paperwork for the load, why did you why didn't you just go to your fleet manager to see if they can? You know, if you're still at Markham, why you didn't just go to the fleet manager and just have them to make new paperwork there? Why you forwarded the dial face for? No, there's there's no physical fleet manager at this Markham location. Oh, not anymore. Oh, okay. I, no, my my fleet runs out of um, Tunnel Hill, Georgia. Oh, okay. Well, so they didn't. So they. So at the Markham Terminal, they there's no physical paperwork on that site. But there's no nope. at Markham. There's no nobody there. They do just the orientation, as far as I know. That's all. There is no fleet managers out of that location. Wow, that's that's a big change. Because when I when I used to pull out of Markham, there used to be like a gang of fleet managers there, but. But that was years ago. No, there's there's literally nobody there. It's just it's just like you know Doug and all of them there that that do the orientation session, and then they got that one office for like the terminal manager, and then I guess the lady who helps with the with the fuel card setup, and that's it. Like it's, yeah, they're the only personnel there. <laughs> okay, so you just mentioned the terminal manager. Why you just didn't go to him? I went to her first. 
about about the truck. They weren't there when they sent me that load. Yeah, she she was aware of the whole situation. Yeah, no, no, I went through everything. We're talking about the yeah. load, and I'm just kind of wondering, you know, if you had a fleet manager, right? I, you know, I'm just wondering why you reached out to Dialface instead of just reaching out to the. No, I didn't. Re- no, 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 no. When I when I got there. When I got the load and I checked everything, I spoke to dispatch. Like, I messaged dispatch, and they confirmed with me, like, hey. Because I'm like, there's no paperwork. You know, I'm not sure if I should leave or not or whatever. I'm like, I'm not sure I'm supposed to leave without the paperwork. They're like, no, don't leave yet. We're going to um see if we can get the paperwork over to you. Now, when I told her about it, now, dispatch is saying that, they sh- that something should be in my email. But when I go to my email, it's in the spam. And it literally says spam do not open or some type of thing like that. So in the midst of us all talking again at that time, when I had explained it to her, she's like, oh, you could go ahead and send it to me. I didn't ask. Again, I didn't ask. Spam, Mm -hmm. you can't open. (laughs) It's part of your, it's it's part of your mail. It's some, some emails from, you know, from places like that goes to your spam because they're not sure if it's a legitimate email or not to go into your mm-hmm. into your main uh, primary mail. But if you go to your spam and you see something from U.S. Express, i.e. variant or your fleet manager's name at, at such and such, then, yeah, you 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 could open it. You you could open it. So, But when it the, is literally in a title that says spam, I'm not clicking on it. Like, the, the message itself said, like, I need to download or something like that, like, spam. It gave me a spam alert. Because I do open spam mail. This one had a different message on it. I'm like, I'm not going to click on that to download it, and then I get something wrong with this damn on phone. I, I I feel you on that. Me, I I would have. No, but... it was it was literally. I'm, I'm going to see if I can find it, and I'm, I'm going to forward you it so you can see what it said, too. Okay. I, I, I feel <laughs> no. you on that. Okay, so you, so you forwarded to Dialface. Dialface was able to open mm-hmm. it. Did mm-hmm. she tell you that, that that the paperwork was, if that's the case, did that mean the paperwork was in the email? And you could just use your yeah. use your phone as, you know, as, you know, verification for the, for the load that you was on. So since you sent her the email and then she was able to open it, was she able to send you back the 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 email so that you can have it she, so you can get on the road. She did. She did. She did send it back, but it didn't have any information. Hold on, I'm about to see if I pull it up real quick while we're talking about it. It didn't have any information, so it like literally had no weight, no count, no bill, like no nothing. Like it just had like the driver name or like the the address of either where it was picked up from or where it was going. One of the two. I'm not going to see if I can pull it up real quick because, yeah, no, it was it was just very different. So with the email and everything, what happened to the fact that Dalface mm-hmm. tried to get you fired? I don't know what, what, what transpired in that email. She sent another email. After that initial email that I sent to them when I explained, like, hey, I've been sitting for all these days, um, they're telling me like I'm not gonna be paid. They're still trying to get me over to a new truck, and all of that. After that, I don't know what transpired because the the Matt guy sent a long, a very long email saying that I refused everything, and I'm like, he's not even the fleet manager who's been dealing with me. Kim has been dealing with me, and Kim knows every step of the way what's going on. So I don't know where he came from saying that I've been refusing anything. So that's why I was just like, you know what? You can tell them to call me directly because I, I used her phone to send that email because she has some type of mentor, I guess, email group setting that she, she speaks to, I guess, whoever is in charge of it there. So I was like, okay, no problem. I'll, I'll send it from there so we can get a call back. And after then, it just went left. Okay. So did you, so did you call her up? And well, let me ask you this: Was her oh, text her. was was her name brought up in the sense of 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 telling you that hey, Dialface said something something and you know got you fired? Yes, I literally have the recording where it says I was fired. She says that I resigned. That's so, why they unassigned that truck that night. So was that from from <laughs> Dialface or was that from somebody else yes. saying Dialface's name? No, that was from my fleet manager telling me that she 
that doll face trucker stated that I resigned. Oh, she. So, what was that fleet manager's name? Or I mean, you you, you don't have Tim. To. Oh, okay. So, so Tim came back to you. She's the main one that's been speaking to me. Her name is Tim. Kim K I M. Yes. Oh, Kim K I M. I I thought you said Tim. Okay. Yeah. So wait. No. So Kim came back to you and said, "Hey, uh, Dollface." said that you resigned right yeah because she was like she was basically saying like she was working on making the arrangements to get me home and i'm just like okay but you know what happened why are you talking like that why are you talking like that because this is my voice this is my voice no it's not i heard you talking a minute ago i know you don't talk like that but, like, but, where did but, this come from but why would i mean dial face don't and know that's my you. point I mean, Dowface don't know you, and it don't sound like you had an issue with Dowface, and and you already okay, said <laughs> you already said that Dowface uh, offered her assistance to you. So why would Dowface mm -hmm. try to get rid of you? She is pro variant U.S. Express. They did nothing wrong in her eyes. She is pro variant U.S. Express. They did nothing wrong to me in her eyes. I am looking at it like a bad boyfriend relationship or some some crap she said. I can show you messages too. She never confirmed nor denied that she said that I resigned. Let me see if I could get this straight. Uh, she's making it like you're the problem. Right? Yes. Oh, I'm not giving the company a chance is what she said. You're not me. giving the company a chance. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. But, okay, so so now you're in a conversation with Dialface. Did you outright come out and ask her? And I'm going allegedly here. Yeah. Did you outright come out and ask her and say, hey, did you tell them I was resigning? Yeah. What's, what's the deal? Yeah. What? What did she say, if anything? Um, it was Donald Ramsey, who is the, um, I guess, the, the organizer of um, the, the mentorship thing that they had. I was like, they literally removed me, removed my PCA, and it's on my truck, same time last night, and they're still refusing to change my fleet. Said I resigned, yet no one spoke to me and reached out to me directly. After that initial email was sent detailing my experience, the claim that they got me a load and I can run. It's about principle. I made it very clear what I need and they ignored and dismissed it on several occasions. To have to, re to rely on someone while OTR, there has to be a great form of communication and some level of trust and there is none with this fleet. Only one I spoke with that has been trying to assist me is Kim. I'm running 6P to 6A to avoid any unsafe situations while parking overnight. If I, if I can, until I feel more comfortable. It doesn't seem as though something as simple as that is being, well, is even registering with them. But thank you. I appreciate it for your, well, your help or whatever. Because when I asked her, I said, I was wondering if they spoke to you yesterday regarding the email. So that was the, con that was the conversation that you sent to her. What was, what was the conversation that was sent to you back from her? I'm about to show you right now what was sent to me. She sent me a, a screenshot of what she said to them. Because I was like, you know, did you say I resigned? She's like, I was just the first and foremost, thank you for your information. We're reaching out and da 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 da. And uh, she said, she is ultimately saying she wants dedicated or another fleet, basically, I guess he was trying to say. She's not given us a chance and has yet to run a load with us to give us a chance. So that was their whole thing. And then this is. Wait, uh, wait, Anita, Anita, I'm confused. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm I'm confused. Wait, the initial, the initial, what you said prior to trying to find the screenshot, you said mm -hmm. you you said that that initial information is what you sent to Dialface in the fact of saying, hey, thank you for trying to help me out, yada yada yada, but. Did you say anything to her in that initial conversation about what what Kim said, yeah, so they that, said you that, got, I resigned. that you resigned? So what 
what did Dowface say in conjunction to that part of the conversation? She never responded. She never responded to that. Because that's what I thought. I said that I resigned, yet no one spoke to me or reached out to me directly. After that initial email was sent, me telling my experience. She never, she never said anything about, you know, um, speaking to them and telling them that I resigned. So basically, you, you feel that she had something to do with... Oh, she most definitely did. With, with trying to get you resigned because obviously you still with them. So I guess yeah. whatever whatever they tried to do didn't pretty much work to to get you. Because I told him, I said, if, if you're if you're gonna say I resigned, I'm saying you you terminated me because you're telling me it's not gonna work. So that's not me resigning. You're terminating me. Oh. Okay, so in other words, Dowface did not confer or deny the fact that she had anything yeah. to do with you, uh, yeah. with you, quote unquote, resigning allegedly. Yeah. Okay. 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 So once you got all that out the way, um, are you and Dowface? Are y'all still in communications with each other, or where 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 your know. relationship stands? Huh? I don't reach out at all. There's no reason for me to. You just pretty much uh, kill all the relationship between you and Dialface, as far as her being your mentor. She was never the kind to be my mentor. She was just offering to help, and I thought she was trying to. Oh, okay, okay, but you felt yeah. But, no, but you felt the the help that she was giving wasn't helping. Once they told me she said to them that I resigned, there was nothing else she could do for me. Okay. All right. Allegedly. So you're still uh, driving with the company, and, and by the sounds of it, now the company feels that you're a problem child, and they're not... Again, like I said, the mouths is just ain't mouthing right now. Correct. They giving you late loads. So now that when you go and get a load, it's already late picking it up. They trying to make that. Yeah. They, they trying to put that on you. Uh, now you got the load. You taking it to the cosignee late, meaning that they'll come back. Yeah. The, the cosignee will be like, oh, you missed your appointment and you got to be a... Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 you got to be on the wait list and and all sorts of crazy stuff that's going on. What I what I yeah. think what I think they're trying to do is kind of push you out. They 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 yeah. don't want it. They don't want to terminate you, but they're going to give you so many crappy loads and give and put you in the position of. Of, of, not, of not being successful with variant, they they mm -hmm. want you to leave. They they want you to quit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And that's what I did. Okay. Oh, okay. So now you had an issue with uh with one of the trailers at this place. Where where was the what was the name of the co-signee? That you had an issue with the, with the with the trailer, being tight. Which one? Uh, oh, uh, that was um, Procter and Gamble in some part of PA. I I think I know which is it. Is it the one across the street from the terminal? Oh, I don't even know where the terminals are. I could Shippensburg, look up the Shippensburg, PA. Probably this one is Tunk Tuck Hannock. Or something like that. Oh, you that? Oh, okay. I know where that's. At. Yeah, yeah. That that little. Yeah. Yeah, that little area right I'm there. I'm like, and if you see the spot that I parked, and there was so much mud in that spot, I was just like, I had to put bags on my feet just to step over there. I'm like, yeah, that. I don't have no tall rain boots. <laughs> yeah, that that little hole in the wall right there can be challenging, even for I'm a season. Even, e even for season drivers. That can be uh, 
Nah. That could be challenging. Okay, so so you did you hit the trailer or or somebody outside said you hit no. the trailer? Someone outside said I hit the trailer. Okay, so but did you hit the trailer? No. Okay, so you was able to see on your on your on your side side. Did you get out and look? Yes, several times. Okay, so you so did you get it in a hole? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it took me a good like 30 40 minutes, but okay. I got it in. Okay, so you got it in a hole and some yard jockey says that you hit the trailer. Yes. But Okay. So if that was me in that situation cuz I hit plenty of trailers. I mean, I, I ain't gonna, mm-hmm. I ain't gonna lie. When I drove for U.S. Express, I mean, yeah, they they had us in in some impossible places, and some of which you you could not help but to hit the trailer, especially if you're a new driver. So hitting yeah. hitting the same trailer, I mean, you know, I got you know I got reprimanded too, but I'm over here like it's our trailer, and I didn't, you know, I just bumped it. You know what I'm saying? I. It wasn't. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like that. I like hit it and tore it up type deal. Yeah. I mean, I I just I just bumped it and I kind of felt that I bumped it. So when I moved back, that's what up, I said. I said if I would have hit it on that side, I would have felt it. Right. So if I would have moved, you know, I would have moved back up. You know, got you know, set up, and then I got it in. So he's saying that yeah. you hit the trailer. Okay, but. <sighs> If he said that you just hit the trailer, I mean, you know, this, I mean, this is supposed to be a yard guy. You know, y'all supposed to be like, not buddy buddies, but, you know, hey, y'all, you know, he should probably be like, well, you know, I understand you're a new driver and we have drivers yeah. all the time type deal, you know, conversation. But as you, he didn't, he didn't say nothing else on to the fact, but he must no. have went back and said something because you were stopped yeah you you were stopped at the at the guard shack the, and the crazy thing is though the the little security guy that they got running around there he actually came over there after i got it in the hole then he comes over and says all that well you could have dropped it and we could have had a yard jockey put it in so why didn't you come from the beginning did he come <laughs> over there to the well, you mentioned that he took pictures and everything. Did he take no, pictures? No, oh, he didn't take pictures. Okay. No. So why you at the That's guard? That's why I had turned around and went back and take pictures. But why you at the guard shack though? They asked you for your driver's license. I. Yeah. That's that's just me. I I don't think if I didn't do anything wrong, I wouldn't have gave it to them. They would have just had to. I- they would have just what had I told to... them. I said, you made it seem like it was for my bill of lading because he had my paperwork. So I'm looking. I'm like, usually when they have to have the have to have your IDs, it's usually like posted. I'm like, so he's giving me my stuff back. I'm like, oh, is this normal? Like, I don't see nothing. He's like, no, nah, they just asked me to grab it for you. I'm like, what do you mean they just asked you to grab it from, from me? Like, for what? What's the reason? They. He's like, oh, they have to do an incident report. I'm like, well, you didn't tell me that that's what it was for because I went and gave it to you. I was like, no one said that there was going to be an incident report done. <laughs> I said, if that was the case, I had to call my company first. There was an incident report that was supposedly had made. Was you able to see that mm-hmm. incident report because you had to sign off on it? No, I wasn't able to sign off on it. They um, they emailed it to me, but everything is just backwards. Like I said, the the side of the trailer that they photographed was my um blind side of my trailer but you said that i hit on my driver's side you have so now you have a preventable on your on your record with that i have no idea i have no idea what's happening okay that's don't not, tell me anything okay number one number number one i me if that was me no you wouldn't get my driver's license not for no incident report and number two you're not going to write up an incident report Without me reading the incident report and signing off on it. 
Exactly. You're not going to do that. Oh, my God. At least not to me, anyway. I'm just saying this is this is just me. I mean, yeah. You know, you being the I rookie driver, right? Were, um, you you being the rookie driver yeah. and everything, and you know everything happens so fast. But me, even even in my rookiness, I you know I I, I have a tendency of I got to read what you're gonna write up on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If yeah. you want to write, if you want to write Definitely. me up. If you're gonna write me up, I'm gonna have to read what I'm getting right up for, and and you know sign off on the fact that I might not agree, but I see that you got it, that you written it up. So mm-hmm. if if I don't see or read it, I I, I think that's well. Yeah. With mega carriers, I I don't know if if you able to file a grievance on that. I I don't know, but I don't even know. I I don't know, but I'm I'm just saying that that whole little fiasco right there was 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 way not cool. Uh, you could have just let me know. Like you never said that there was going to be an incident report done. Like why don't you make me? Double espresso, macchiato, with extra foam. You got it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why don't you make it like your life depends on it? And then even with me staying there, mind you, I did not leave. So they ended up calling DOT on me. I'm like, it's fine. Like, you can call DOT because I didn't do okay. anything. So wait. They at, wait. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean? <sighs> what do you mean Procter & Gamble called DOT? Yes. yes, because I was like, I need my accident report before I pull off. Uh, and they call DOT. Are you sure they didn't call the police? They actually call for. They call police, and it was a DOT police officer that showed up. Oh, okay, okay. He said he's been doing it for twenty four years. They called the police because you refused to leave the leave the property, pretty much. Yes. Okay. Without my incident report, yes. Okay. Okay. So. Because as per variant, I'm supposed to get it from the co-signing your shipper before I leave. Right. Did you did you get the paperwork from them? You you had the paperwork and everything. They right? emailed it to me. The paperwork? Mm-hmm. No, I'm talking about the yeah, paper. They, I'm, no, I'm I'm talking about the bill of lading. Did did you get all of that after? Oh you dropped, yes, I have that. Okay, so you got all of that. Uh, yeah. They gave you your they gave you your license back. So you pretty much you was good to go, but the only thing was you didn't want to leave because you wanted a physical copy of the incident yes. report, which you said that they emailed to you that day, that at that point, or when did you when did they email it and when did you get it? That next day, she they ended up emailing it. But here's the kicker: the pictures, the photographs in that picture were taken at night. Mind you, this happened, like, sun up. Because I have pictures from when I went back and took pictures, when I went back and took my pictures. Let's talk about what happened with the with the DOT situation. Like, you you did mention Nothing. that he you... Went, he mm-hmm. you You did mention that he came and y'all had a conversation. Did he... Did he yeah. hinder? Did he hinder you or anything like that? Did he tell you like, yeah, you 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 know, listen. You nah, know. I felt the way. <laughs> I think like his initial approach was like he was coming up to some BS, like pull up over there. Like I was just like, okay, so I don't know what they told him or what they explained to him. I'm like, I'm not trying to be difficult. I'm just asking questions because I do not know. I'm fairly newly licensed. They're saying that I hit their trailer. I'm saying that I didn't. I have my pictures, and I just need my incident report from them. I don't care about witness statements. I just need their physical incident report or number from them because my company does not give it to me. So what did the DOT officer do? He was was like, basically, he's just going to go back there and look at the the damage to see if it's going to be something that I'm going to get a ticket for or not. On private property. Because I showed him the pictures. I let him. Thank you, thank you. I showed him, this. He told me that this whole thing is private property after the fact. So he, um, I showed him the picture. I, I let him take a picture of the trailer that they claimed that I hit, just so that he knew that he was going to the correct trailer. They didn't pull something else up. 
because I actually found the trailer. When I went back to take pictures of the trailer, of my trailer, and that trailer that they claimed that I hit, the trailer on my driver's side, they had moved it. So I was like, well, if y'all said that I hit it, why didn't y'all take pictures before y'all moved that trailer? I'm like, that would make sense. Like, that would support your case, if anything. I'm like, y'all moved that trailer and didn't take pictures, but y'all got pictures at night of the trailer. Like, that makes no sense to me. Y'all got the wrong side of my truck. So as I was pulling up to, like, do a, um, a U-turn and turn around, I actually spotted the trailer that they said that I hit. So I got out and I took pictures of that trailer. And that time they called my street manager telling her that I needed to leave the property. So I'm like, it's fine. They took my license. I came back to make sure I took pictures of the trailer. So at least I know what I'm sending in too when I, you know, follow up with the rest of my report. I get to the gate. So I'm just like, you know, now I'm here for my incident report because it should be done by now. Because he'd be like, it's going to be a few minutes. It's just finishing it up. The part of mm -hmm. the DOT officer going back there taking pictures for his own for his own uh, uh, thing. He said, he basically, what? he was like, um, he showed me the pictures that he took. He says, it does look like they're new scratches, but he's like, I can't believe like they brought me out here for this. This is two hours of my life. I'll never get back. He's like, it's not going to be a citation. It's not considered an accident under DLT. Like, and on top of that, like it's private property. So they have, to, they see as per their policy, they have to do an incident report for anything that happens on their ground. So DOT officer gets back in his car, whoop, whoop, he's out the way, he's out the door. You get all your stuff mm -hmm. back, you still didn't get a a a physical copy of of the incident report. They emailed it to you and to your and to the company. Um now that your company got it, what was the con did safety reach out to you or your fleet manager reached out to you, and what was the conversation between you two on that front? With with everything that had happened, um, just the just the accident and the incident report, and you not getting a physical copy. What did your fleet manager? No, say? originally, yeah, originally with the first one, remember I told you I had a trailer collapse on me. With that one, they told me that I should have gotten my report from that shipper or whatever the location. You know, so this is why I went so hard to get it from them. And now they're telling me, just leave the property. I was like, you can't have it both ways. <laughs> you was at Procter & Gamble. They reached out to you and just told you to go ahead and leave, right? To my fleet manager. Yes. Or to because, our dispatcher, yes. Or they, they, you know, they my did. fleet manager called me and told me to leave. Okay, okay. Wow, Procter & Gamble. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, the last, well, the, the I'm assuming Procter and Gamble was the second incident. The first one is mm -hmm. when you said that the, a dock worker fell through the trailer. Yes, like through the trailer, yes. like through the bottom of yes. the trailer. Yes. Did you pull up? Did you pull away from the dock? No. So when he came on I was to the trailer, connected to the trailer. So when he came on to the trailer he fell through the trailer you didn't pull away yeah. from the dock no wow it was docked that's how they unloaded they said slide your tandems back backed up he got on he maybe got two two barrels of them them paper rolls off oh this is a paper he load. tried to go deeper into that trailer yep he tried to go deeper into that trailer and fall straight so straight through the center wait he so <laughs> wow so again, yeah. I, d I just want to make sure you did not pull away from the dock, right? No, the the truck was shut off. We have to shut it off. We have to remove the red um um emergency line, and they they put a lock on it. Oh wow! They let you stay connected, but they just lock out the air. They didn't make that your fault, did they? They, they couldn't have. That was an accident. I have no idea because they won't give me the report. They well, won't give me any report. Well, that I I, I want to say. That right there, if you didn't pull away, you did all the safety uh, procedures, you, you slid your tandems, you took your airline off, the truck wasn't on. I think I got an idea where you was at, but the, the truck wasn't on. <laughs> well, when I was there, they, they took our keys. So they took our keys, they took, uh, they took the red airline off. They made us slide the tandems and chop. Oh, this, the this this was a different location though. This was a Procter and Gamble. Oh, okay. okay. Where the trailer collapsed at? That wasn't Procter and Gamble. That was somewhere in um 
VA, I think it was. Well, no, no, no. Me. I know, I know. You said it wasn't. You know, the second one was Procter and Gamble. I think I, like I said, I yeah. think I got an idea of where you was at because it was a paper load. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so he, so the, 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 the forklift driver goes on, grab a couple of rolls, goes a little bit farther in, and in the center of the trailer, it just, it just unbuckled up under him and yeah he's on the ground yeah how did that well he didn't completely come out like he was like the 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 forklift was literally still in the like in the trailer i gotta send you a picture it was still like in the trailer and he was like leaned up on it like it the the whole forklift was like on the wall of the trailer like it was still the bottom was still touching the floor of the trailer but the way that it fell, it's, it's just weird. I'll send you the photo so you'll have a better like, right, idea so of what it looked like. So, of, <laughs> of course, you had to unhook. Did you, wait, did you? Oh, no. Did you pull, did, did they have no. you to pull the trailer out? Did they get the, was they able yes, to get the forklift? They so they was able to get the forklift out. Was they was able to get the yes, rest of the load? Of yeah. Oh, they was what able. What they did was, um, instead of like just pulling back the wall of the trailer, they <laughs> connected the low tow truck thing to, to the forklift and was like literally, cause like the whole side of it kind of split. They would have just like rippled back the wall of the trailer. They'd have been fine getting, you know, everything off the way that it was, but they didn't do that. They just like literally chained the forklift and dragged it out of the side of the trailer. Out the side of the, the trailer? Yeah. So they just literally like pulled it through the hole. <laughs> wow! And then they did like some some triple team like forklift coming around. Like they pulled the load out, and then they they had the 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 floor, the bed of like the the tow truck like go into where the hole of the trailer was to slide the barrel of that paper on, and then move the truck forward, and then let the forklift clamp it and take it off. And then they backed it up again. They did that like at least like four times, I think it was. Now that they got the trailer empty. Did did you have to move it? And if so, where did you have to? Where did sure you, did. Okay, so you so, so you right. So did you so did you leave it at the at the co-signee or or what's the deal? Nope, nope. Supposedly, they told them that they were going to take care of the tow and everything regarding it. There's the kicker. They threw two straps over that trailer. The tow guy was like, oh, my, my, my lot is right right across the road. Just follow me. I'm like, wait, but they told me that y'all said y'all was going to have a tow come. Like, I'm not supposed to move this um, trailer like this. So I called dispatch. Dispatch is like, oh, well, since it's only across the road, you could take it. But no further than that. I wouldn't go any further than that. I'm like, did y'all not just tell me that they said that they were taking care of the, the tow? <laughs> Why am I transporting it anywhere? I'm like, again, they're playing with my license. Again, I'm like, I... I you kind of right. You know, they they trying to save money. But if it was... Everything I was say it, I mean, no if, to is like, you the, can't say no. But wait a minute. The, the, the tow guy did come over, right? The the, mm -hmm. the the tow company did come over. He was an attractive trailer thing, no. But he... But somebody from the tow company, being that it was right across the street, mm -hmm. did come over and mm -hmm. and looked at the assessed the situation and said, mm -hmm. "Okay, so instead of us towing it, you could just back up under it. I'll strap it down, and you could just take it on across the street." You, I mean, you could. I mean, you know that, that that's okay. You know, I mean, that's okay mm -hmm. if if. If they strapped it down, mm -hmm. you know, strapped it down and everything, and it was right across the street, I, I don't see why. Once I say I don't feel comfortable, it should have been in the discussion. She can't move that trailer. I feel you. As a company, you're supposed to protect your worker. Right. But You're not doing that. Yeah, but companies like that don't look at it that way. And then after that, they still had me sitting, like, 
a good like three four hours, and so I just ended up going to a pile, uh, a love because they they have a love thing. So I ended up just going to a loves and shut down for the night because they didn't get me a new load. No sooner did I get there to shut down, about eleven o'clock, they try and send me to go pick up an empty trailer. I'm not moving this truck because their thing is, oh, she's been sitting all that time, so she's been in sleeper birth mode. She can just change her on duty status to sleeper birth. She can continue running. No, because I was sitting up in my truck that whole time. That's not sleeper birth status to me. I'm on duty waiting on you. That's what they figured. That's what they figured that you could have did. You could have went into sleeper birth and did a kind of like a split. I'm like, if I'm not at a truck rest stop, but this, if I'm not at a terminal, there is no me sleep. <laughs> but this is, but after you take the, after you guys get the trailer over there, you, you say you waited. Why, why are you, why are you waiting for the trailer? I got to, I got to that location at like one something, I think it was, that appointment was probably earlier than that. I think it might have been 11 or something like that my appointment was and all that happened like ran out and got done by like 3 p.m. maybe. And they literally did not send me anything that whole time I'm sitting there. Because I'm still sitting at the, the tow guy's yard. I parked the trailer up for him. And I'm just sitting in his yard. So eventually I'm like, all right, it's only getting later. I need to find some place to park if I'm going to go to uh, you know, to a truck stop. Because granted, I'm Bob selling, but they're usually very small. So I just ended up leaving. Now, all of this is me PCing, too, so they're not even paying me for these miles. <laughs> all right, Anita. Woo, lots of uh, lots of things with a uh, variant. All right, you, you mentioned that. Okay, let me see if I can understand this, because you mentioned several times that you're not with them no more, but you also still mentioned that you are with them. So what's your status with them? Oh, I'm still working with them. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I'm still, technically, I'm still on play with them. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's just not going well. And I'm just like, you know, I've tried to be nice about it. You know, I wanted to, you know, eventually, like, document, like, my, my introduction to this whole trucking thing. But I haven't met a company that's been, like, consistent and stood on anything that they offered. Um, and I thought, you know, things would be a little bit different coming here. I'm trying to hang on because these companies are just like, you know, we need at least three consistent months with one company because if the money ain't there, I'm not getting the miles, I leave. <laughs> so this has been the ultimate struggle for me because I'm just like, again, this is now technically my fourth company and it still ain't on the way that I need it to go. Future companies see you as a job hopper. They're, 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 they're not. Yeah. They're going to be hesitant to bring you in. So. And then the last thing I was, it wasn't even like I was there for long. So I'm like, I don't even feel like I should list them. I was only driving for them for like a week, because their equipment was even worse. I'm like, all oh, your codes is up. I can't take this. I'm fighting a ticket because the ELD wasn't running there. Like I'm just, I'm just like, you know what? I'm tired of these companies. They lie, <laughs> lie, 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 get you in here and just do what they want. There you have it, everybody. Anita and her experience uh, with Variant. Just know that this is, you know, this is these individual drivers' experience. And we here at the Recruiter Call Channel do appreciate you coming on and uh, sharing your experience, whether it's good, bad, or ugly. And uh, and hope that mm -hmm. everything else in the future works out for you. I hope so, too. I only have a few more months to make this year, but I just don't know if it'll be here. I said, I go back local and touch and freight before I continue to do OT and not make money. I'm like, I was making the same thing local. Make it make sense. I was home every day then. <laughs> Big G's got it locked. Boy. Want you to let me all night? Yeah, take me down. Want you to make me real white? Yeah, so